hopefully you'll find this interesting. So I have a differential equation where u is a scalar. So du dt is equal to a u with u at 0. Uh, well, you, I'm sorry. Uh, u equal to u0 at t equals 0. What's the solution to that differential equation? And you can use, uh, you, took different, different, you took a course in differential equations, right? You learned all these techniques, like Laplace transforms, method of undetermined coefficients. Some of them you can directly integrate. Turns out this is one of them, right? If I move the dt over to this side, and then I divide by u to that side and then integrate both sides, then I can, then I can just solve the thing. Right? But this is also like the most fundamental differential equation. You should probably just know the solution. What is it? So u of t is equal to e to the at u0. That's the solution. Of the, that's the simplest differential equation. That's the solution. Okay. What if I have dv dt is equal to 4v minus 5w, and I have dw dt is equal to 2v minus 3w, or I might choose to write that like this, dv dt, dw dt is equal to 4 minus 5, 2 minus 3 vw, or I might say that this is du dt, where u is now a vector, this is a, and this is u, right? And I guess I need some, some boundary conditions, or, or initial conditions. So let's say v at 0 is equal to 8, and w at 0 is equal to 5, or again, in vector form, we might write u is equal to 8, 5, u, 0. Okay, so given this knowledge and given the way I wrote that equation, what's the solution to that equation? How about, again, look at, this, look at the equation. du dt equals a scalar a times u, d vector u equals a matrix A times U. What's the, what's the, uh, what's the solution? Well, let's just guess and say that U is equal to E to the AT, where A is a matrix now, right, times the vector U0. That's it. You know the solution to every single linear ordinary differential equation. You could forget Laplace transforms and method of determining coefficients, all of that. You know the solution to every single linear ordinary differential equation. It is e to the at. When you write the system of equations like this, the whole trick now is to compute e to the at. It's difficult, right? It's not just e to the every entry. That's, that's not the way it works. But there's something useful we can do. It turns out if we decompose A into its eigenvectors, and so I'll write it like this, V1, V2, times its eigenvalues, lambda is 1, 0, lambda 
two times V one V two inverse. Right? Or if I define a matrix Q that is V one V two, right? Remember V V one and V two are the eigenvectors associated with lambda one and lambda two respectively, right? So these are vectors, right? So this is a column vector and a column vector. That means Q is a matrix. And then so then I might write this as Q lambda Q inverse. And if I do that, okay, if I do that, this special decomposition is called an eigenvalue decomposition or eigen decomposition a lot of times. Right? So the Q is a matrix of the eigenvectors. Lambda is a diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues. <laughs> then, and remember, this is equal to A, right? This is equal to A. Then I can easily compute E to the AT as this. So I'm going to have to go up here because I want to keep it on the same page. But E to the AT is Q e to the lambda t, q inverse, and e to the lambda t is just e to the lambda 1 t, 0, 0, e to the lambda 2 t, q inverse. All right. So if you know how to do this, Eigen decomposition, you can solve any linear system of Diffin-Field equations. And all you have to do, you forget all that other nonsense and just remember that the solution is e to the at. Right? It's just computing e to the at, you have to be able to do this. Okay? So let's try. Um, yeah. What? That's a that's a capital lambda, the Greek symbol. It's a capital lambda. It's a matrix. I usually use I usually use uh, capital signals symbols for matrices. So this is a matrix like that looks like this. This is that matrix. No, no, Q is this. It's a it's a matrix of the eigenvectors. What? And what about the vectors? Do you because I thought vectors couldn't be numerical. Is it really helpful? Uh if this is normalized, if this is or orthonormalized, you can it's the, the transpose is its inverse. But in general not. Only if it's a unitary matrix. So it's a, it's a matrix of the eigen the normalized eigenvectors. So the, the result in MATLAB that you get, the inverse is transpose. But this is not, not true as I've had it written in. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah. Th this is equal to A. This is equal to A. So this is just, re, you know, here I wrote everything out. This is writing it more compactly in matrix notation. So I wanted to solve this. We're going to have time. So at least what I'll show you is the eigenvalue, this eigen decomposition that we did, right? Notice this is the same matrix A that we just solved for, same values, right? So let me just show you that this eigen decomposition works. Okay. So. Uh, So, uh, well, <coughs> lambda equals minus one, zero, zero, two, right? Those are my two eigen values. Right? Q is equal to the eigenvectors, which the eigenvector associated with the first eigenvalue was 1, 1, right? 
and the eigenvector associated with the second one was 5, 2, right? Um, just due to the notation in Mathematica, I have to transpose that to get it in the column vector. Right, so then if I just say Q times That's what we started with. Right? So it works. The eigen decomposition works. That, that's the matrix we started with, right? Okay? We, we solve for these by hand, we solve for those by hand, and then this operation puts it back together. Okay? So we got a little bit more to do probably the next 30 minutes of the next lecture. And in that, I'll go ahead and finish this example. I'll show you exactly how to you can solve that linear system of differential equations. Uh, using the eigenvalue decomposition. <laughs>